Good morning, welcome to our daily psalm. Uh, today we're reading through Psalm 99. Psalm 99. Uh, this is a psalm which is not given a title in the Bible Psalter. As some psalms do have, but there's no doubt about the theme of Psalm 99. We could very easily give it the title, Holy is He. Uh, that phrase comes three times in the psalm, at the end of verses 3 and 5 and 9. Uh, and the latter two, verses 5 and 9, bear a, a great similarity to one another, which naturally divides the psalm into two sections. Um, and each section consists of a set of reasons for praising God, followed by uh, a summons, a call to lift God's name, the Lord's name, high. For holy is He. Let's jump straight into the psalm. Verse 1, the Lord is King. Well, this is the same start as Psalm 93 yesterday. Uh, this statement of fact, this is, if you like, the graffiti scrawled across time and space and the writing down the stick of rock of human existence. God rules okay. The psalm makes its statement, the Lord is King. Let the peoples, well, so the Lord is King. So, so what? Now, how are we supposed to react to this declaration? In our Western culture uh, of rational scepticism, the answer would probably be, the Lord is king? Well, really? Let's, um, let's take that statement apart, shall we, and examine the evidence and see whether we really think that's the case or not. But Psalm 99 has a better answer. This is how to react to the news that the Lord is King. The Lord is King, let the peoples tremble. Now, a dictionary definition of tremble, or at least in mine, is to shake involuntarily as a result of anxiety, excitement or frailty. And to come under the gaze of God the King may well make us anxious. The ancient belief, of course, was that uh, you could not come before God and live. Coming under the gaze of God the King may well get us excited. I mean, our hearts tend to thump a bit if we get anywhere near one of our heroes, don't they? In the flesh, as it were. But what would our pulse rate do uh, in the presence of Almighty God the King? Or to come under the gaze of God the King may make us painfully aware of our frailty and our inadequacy. But the response is to tremble. I wonder when you last trembled during a church service, during worship. So, of course, how the Quakers got their name, of course, because they quaked, trembled before God. But it isn't just we who tremble before God. Here's the second half of verse 1. The Lord is King, let the peoples tremble. He is enthroned above the cherubim, let the earth shake. Because God is on his throne, the whole earth, its response should be to its creator, to shake before him. That reference to cherubim, God enthroned above the cherubim, might refer to God's heavenly sanctuary, where the cherubim, cherubim are, or it might refer to the cherubim um, in the, the temple, the sanctuary there. It could be either, I suppose. Um, and we recall Ezekiel in chapter 1 of his prophecy, seeing a vision of uh, the throne of God as comprising living cherubim, um, a mysterious flying and fiery uh, edifice, awesome picture, before which Ezekiel trembles, falls to the ground as though dead. The Lord is enthroned above the cherubim, let the earth shake, that's the earth's true response really to God the King. Verse 2, the Lord is great in Zion and high above all peoples. So the Lord may be high above everyone else but he has chosen to be below, uh, chosen Zion as his special place to dwell. Verse 3, let them, the peoples, all of them, praise your name which is great and awesome. The Lord our God is holy. And that's the significant verse which ties together, um, that's the significant word which ties together this psalm. 
the Lord our God is holy. One commentator writes this at this point, holy is a word to emphasize the distance between God and humankind, not only morally, as between the pure and the polluted, but in the realm of being between the eternal and the creaturely. So it emphasizes, if you like, the distance between us and God. The commentator goes on, if the gulf has been bridged, as verse 2 asserts, it was done from the far side. There's no way we could have bridged that gift, that, that gulf. God has to come to us to be down at our level, to be down with us. Verse 4, mighty king who loves justice, you have established equity. You have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Another word for the uh, people of Israel, God's people. Um, and when the king has such supreme power like this, well, we are mightily relieved when that power is used to serve the people and to serve up what is good and right and true, as this verse, uh, this verse declares. Jesus, of course, showed us what this servant king looks like, what he does, and the lengths to which he will go to establish justice. It would mean his own self-giving, the self-giving of his own life. And so after all this, here comes the summons to the whole world, to one and all. Verse 5, exult, lift up, exult the Lord our God, and bow down before his footstool, for he is holy. He is so utterly other that we should physically lower ourselves before him. Now we're in John the Baptist's territory here with when he meets Jesus. And do you remember what he says? He says, uh, he must become greater and I must become less. Uh, well, before the holy God, that is our place. God has to be magnified, exalted, lifted up, and we are lowered before him. And then we come into the second half of Psalm 99. God may be holy and entirely other, but he is not aloof or disinterested. Now the psalmist focuses on interaction with this holy God as being another valid way to respond to him. To him being the king that we're invited into conversation with him. Yes, we should tremble before him, as in the first half of the, uh, the psalm, but we should also speak with him, which is what the second half of the psalm is all about. So verse 6, Moses and Aaron among his priests and Samuel among those who call upon his name. They called upon the Lord and he answered them. It's almost disbelief in that. And he answered them. They called and God actually answered. It's like, I don't know, ringing up the queen and the, the queen answers. Verse 7, he spoke to them out of the pillar of cloud. They kept his testimonies and the law that he gave them. So God responded. He gave them the law, his decrees, the ways that they should live. He instructed them, gave them wisdom. Not only did God answer them, he actually took time to guide them. Verse 8, the final verse. You answered them, uh, sorry, uh, before we get to the final verse. Verse 8, you answered them. O Lord our God, you are a God who forgave them and pardoned them for their offences. It's hard to come before God and not know that we are not perfect when he is so perfect. His perfectness, um, as it were, sort of draws out from us. It, it exposes our own imperfection. And yet still he answers them. How gracious a God is this? So this second half of the, the psalm uh, references three great examples who, despite God's holy otherness, called on God and knew God as one who listens and responds. So uh, hence the reference to Moses, Aaron, to Samuel. But the psalm is careful not to separate these three out as the only ones to so encounter God, speak with him, and receive a reply, but sets them merely as examples among the rest of us. So this calling upon God and being answered by God is for us too, so Psalm 99 would tell us, who like Moses, Aaron and Samuel, sometimes 
also get it very wrong and need God's forgiveness and grace, his pardon. The God of justice, the God of righteousness from the first half of the verse uh, of the psalm in verse 4 has made it his business to grant healing and restoration to us. And hence this now, at the, right at the end of the psalm, this second call to lift God's name on high. Exalt the Lord our God and worship him upon his holy hill. For the Lord our God is holy. Holy is he, holy is he, holy is he. Let us pray. O Lord God, holy and mighty King, you love justice, you establish equity. May we likewise love justice more than gain and mercy more than power and follow in the ways of our servant King, Jesus Christ our Lord, in whose name we pray. Amen.